Hello, everybody. No, I hope this finds you well. Um, I'm feeling much better now. Thank you uh, for your concerns. Um, I'll try. I'm making this video as a response to a video I seen a while back. It's a fairly older video, but I thought I'd give it a shot. Um, I'll put the link below in case they don't accept it as a video response. I'm sure he will. He seems like a reasonable fellow. Uh, so, I'm going to answer his ten questions to the best of my ability. Uh, ten questions that Christians cannot answer. Um, I think it's probably a fight back to the ten questions atheists can't answer. In a mocking sort of way. He did it very humorously, and I applaud him for that. Uh, so let's get on with the questions and uh, see what we can do about it. All right. Uh, here we go. We'll start with the first question. Ten questions Christians can't answer. Question number one When Noah's Ark landed, how did the kangaroos make it back to Australia? <laughs> I've heard this one before. Two possibilities. Two possibilities. The Bible doesn't say for one thing. But there are two possibilities. One, the same way the Aborigines got to Australia via a land bridge. The second possibility is speciation of certain animals once they got there. There are related classes of animals to kangaroos. Uh, you should know this if you study your evolution. Uh, okay, go to the second question. Question number two. If the ark was covered in pitch or tar to make it watertight, it also made it airtight. How did the animals survive more than one or two days living in complete darkness without any fresh air? Remember, the rain lasted 40 days and 40 nights. Noah couldn't open the window in the top. <laughs> Noah was a smart man, and um, God's instructions on that ark were pretty specific. He did have a ventilation shaft running across the top of the entire thing which water that blew in would wash out and the air could still flow, kind of like a water trap that we have in our toilet. Um, as far as pit being in the dark, I'm sure they brought lamps with them. Question number three. Since Adam and Eve didn't know right from wrong before eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, why did God then punish them for something they didn't understand they were doing? <laughs> didn't understand they were doing, huh? God told them not to eat of that fruit, Adam, and Eve both knew. God instructed them not to eat of that fruit, or they would surely die. So when they ate of the fruit, they did eventually die before they would have probably lived forever. Let's go on with that. I think that's a two-part question. Question number four. Yeah, number four. Why would God place a forbidden tree in the garden so close to his innocent creation and allow Satan to tempt them into eating from it, all the while looking on without doing a thing to prevent it? Uh, so you and me could be here and having this conversation. After all, God did make the devil too. For a reason. His reasons are his reasons. And uh, it is his to do with as he wishes. Okay, next. Question number five. When the women went to Jesus' empty tomb, was the stone already rolled away, 
or did an angel roll it away after the women got there? <laughs> I'm going to let this one run six. a little bit because these are all related. On the first day of the week, when Jesus rose from the dead, how many women went to the tomb? And which <laughs> ones? Question number seven. If you believe the creation account in Genesis is oh. mere... I'm going to go with these last two questions. They're related to other questions he asks later. Uh, the same answer will apply. I answered this once before in another video response to similar questions. Have you ever heard of witness testimony in a court of law? How the, how the police, interrogators, and, and uh, detectives are taught to handle eyewitness accounts of events. They know that if all the eyewitnesses say exactly the same things, agree exactly on every detail and item of that event, that they most likely made up the story and got together and made up the story. These questions right here actually lend validity to the Gospel because the four Gospels and those following it are all eyewitness testimonies. The fact that they do not correlate on all these facts shows that they didn't get together to fabricate the story. They only reported what they either heard from hearsay because some of them weren't there, they were hiding somewhere, or they saw it and remembered it differently. You put six people, or even less people, in the same room, and they all witnessed the same crime happening at the same time, and it goes by, when the cops come and interview those witnesses, they're going to get that many different stories as to what happened. They'll get that many more descriptions. One person might say, oh, he had a red cap, while another one said, oh, it was blue. One might remember a white t-shirt. The other one might not remember the color of his t-shirt. One might say he had a gun. The other one might not remember the gun. May not have seen it from his angle. Um, this is not showing the Bible is incorrect. Only proving that they were eyewitness testimonies and not a fabrication that they all got together and cooked up, does it not? Question number seven. If you believe the creation account in Genesis is mere allegory, then why don't you throw out Paul's epistles? Because he believed that the creation account was a historical fact. I've already done a thing about Paul. I'm not sure uh, he is actually right. But, uh, yes, even Christ said G Genesis was history. However, you ever hear of allegorical history, or what's the other term I'm trying to think of? Uh, symbolic history. You have to read past the words way to understand it. Okay, let's go on the next one. Question number eight. How many donkeys did Jesus ride this in his triumphal entry into Jerusalem? Again? Was it one donkey, like Mark, Luke, and John say, or was it two donkeys, like Matthew said? Again, I witnessed testimony. Question number also. nine. Matthew and Luke both provide genealogies for Jesus, going all the way back to Adam. Using both of those lists, who was Joseph's father? <laughs> genealogies. The Bible's genealogies are messed up. The ones in the Old Testament in Genesis don't match the ones in Chronicles. They don't match the ones in Matthew, and Matthew, of course, doesn't match Luke. Well, again, they got their material about this. Where did they get their material about the genealogy? 
did they have written records of genealogies back then? Yeah, they made some mistakes probably in some of the names and in placements of these names. This you might find is actually a common error in many ancient texts. Um, I think of one. The line of the Caesars is one. That one depends upon which historian you look at. And there was a period when there were several Caesars in one year, and, and that's really confusing as to which one was which and what line. Some leave one or two out, and some put two or three more in. This is uh, this is simply another mistake on that. Uh, where did they get their genealogies? They had to have heard it from someone who told it to them. That person may have been mistaken. And it also proves that they didn't get together to make up the story. Because if they got together to make up the story, they would both be the same, would they not? And, uh, there are missing parts in the genealogy. It was common practice in ancient days to remove names of people they considered bad in their lines of secession. And the Egyptians did it all the time. They'd go to the length of actually erasing their names by chiseling them out of the walls this is, if you as a historian studied history, you'd know this. Question number 10. Was Jesus crucified on the first day of Passover like the Gospel of John says? Again, or this the is next day, like the eyewitness three testimonial. Um, there was only one apostle at the crucifixion. The rest were in hiding. So they got it from hearsay as well or it was written when they were old in their memories like mine is getting sometimes the older I get the more my memory about things in the past gets confused this is human nature this also adds validity to the eyewitness testimony and proves they did not get together to fabricate the story I hope that answers it. I'm sure it won't satisfy the man who made the video. After all, the video was made more to mock Christianity and our text than it was to actually get at any truth of the matter. So, uh, I wish this man a good life and I pray that he comes to realize the errors of his ways before it's too late. We have little time, people. Oh, and just to lighten the situation a little bit. I wore my sacred vestments to do this video. Have a good day. Have a good day, everybody. Peace, love, and understanding be with you.